Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at solving linear equations. So first let's take a look at a linear equation, which let's come up with one here. 5 times x is equal to 10. So what we want to do is try to find the value of x. So one way we can do that is say, you know, try out some different values for x. So we could do x is equal to 1, we can do 5 times 1, but that's equal to 5, which is not 10. So let's try a new value for x. We could do 5 times 2, and that equals 10. So we know that x is equal to 2. But this isn't a very good way to solve these types of problems. This sort of guessing and checking uh, you can imagine, you know, if x isn't maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, you know, it could get you know, pretty annoying to have to go through all these different numbers, try out all these different things. So that's not a good way to do it. So let's look at a better way to do it. Let's instead uh, talk about a very important rule when it comes to solving linear equations, which is whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. And in this way, we can isolate x on one side of the equation, or on one side of the equal sign, and whatever is on the other side of the equal sign will be the value of x. So in this case, what we want to do is make x the only value on the left side of the equals. So to do that, we want to get rid of this 5. The way we can do that is by dividing everything on this left side of the equals by 5. But, if we want to do that, we have to do that to the other side of the equation as well. So then we do 10 divided by 5. What you do is, these two numbers cross out, and you end up with x is equal to 10 divided by 5, which is 2. So, that's a much better way to solve these types of equations. So, we can do more than just dividing things on each side. So I'm going to throw up a different equation, and we can take a look at how we can solve that. So let me just erase all this. And let's instead take a look at the equation x minus 9 is equal to 81. So what we want to do is, once again, find the value of x. And the best way to do this is to isolate x on one side of the equal sign, thus uh, showing the value of x on the right side of it. So what we want to do to get rid of this minus 9 is to add 9 to the side, and then, of course, add 9 to the other side. This will cause this 9 cancel out that 9, and we will end up with x is equal to 90, which is our answer. So whenever you have a multiplication, like in the first example, where we had 5 times x, you would want to divide by that number, and any time we have a subtraction, we would want to add that number. Similarly, if we had x plus 9 here instead of x minus 9, then in the case of x plus 9, we would want to then subtract 9, and then subtract 9 from the other side. That's pretty much it. It's how to solve a basic linear equation. Hello again. In this video, we're going to take what we learned in the last video about solving linear equations and kind of take it to the next level. So I'm going to start with a harder example this time, which is do 3x plus 12 is equal to 42. Now, last time, 
we only had situations where, you know, x was either multiplied by a single number or added to a single number. Uh, this time we have a situation where we have two different things that we need to do. So when we have this situation, we need to first isolate, you know, anything that is related to the x, so 3x is what we want to isolate, and then we want to get rid of that 3. So going in that order, first we want to subtract 12 from both sides. So do minus 12, minus 12, and what we end up with is 3x is equal to 30. And now just like we did in the previous video, when we're in this situation where we have a number times x, we divide both sides by 3, and we will have x all alone on the left side. So now we know that x is equal to, oops, forgot that up there, x is equal to 30 divided by 3, which is 10. So, now we're going to move on to another example that kind of adds a different aspect to it. A bit, a bit harder, but hopefully you can all follow along. So, just erase everything here real quick. What we're going to be talking about next is a case where we have values for x on both sides of the equation. So, here I'll show you what I mean. This case is where we have 8x plus 12. It's going to be equal to 12x plus 36. So as you see, this time we have x on both sides of the equation. Now our rules still apply. We still want to isolate x on one side of the equals, and we also want to get x all by itself equal to some value on the other side. So same as always, we still want to do the same thing to one side as we do to the other. So first thing we want to do here is get rid of this 12 component on the left side. Now we'll handle dealing with this 12x right here after we get 8x alone on the left side. So first thing we want to do is subtract 12 from both sides and then we will have 8x is equal to 12x plus 24. Now, we want to get this 12x onto the left side with our 8x over here. So, same as we've done before, we're going to subtract 12x and then subtract 12x over here. Which actually gives us, you know, 8 minus 12 is going to give us negative 4x is equal to 24. So it's okay that we have this negative 4 here. It just means that we need to get rid of this negative 4 by, once again, doing the same thing to both sides until we have a value for x. So if we divide both sides by negative 4, divide negative 4, then we will end up with x all alone on this left side, and x will be equal to negative 6. So, there's a fairly complicated example that we've worked through where x is the value, is a value on both sides. So, what I want to show you next is, once again, another step up, but hopefully we can all handle it, where we have another variable come into play. So let me erase everything we have here, and see what I'm talking about. So, variables, as we know, can take place of numbers and equations. And when it comes to 
linear equations, uh, the value that we're trying to solve for, in this case x, can be equal to an expression that involves another variable. So I'll explain what that means in a little bit. The case that we're going to look at now is the case where we have 6x plus 4 is going to be equal to 2 times p, which is going to be our other variable, minus 14. So, what do we do first? I'll give you guys a second to think about it. First thing we want to do is expand want to expand this section over here to make it similar to what we've seen in previous problems. So 6x plus 4 is going to be equal to 2p minus 28. So what did we do there? The left side stayed the same, and this 2 we multiplied by each value within the parentheses, which allowed us to get rid of the parentheses. So we did 2 times p makes the 2p, and we did 2 times 14 is equal to 28, and we kept the minus sign. So now we have 6s plus 4 is equal to 2p minus 28. This is actually very similar to our last equation, except instead of the next value here, we have the value p. Now, we can't do what we did last time, where we eliminated the x on this side by combining it with the 1 on this side. So, instead, what we're going to do is just leave x equal to a value that contains p. So, next thing we want to do is get rid of this plus 4. So we're going to subtract 4 both sides, whoops, a little extra dot there, uh, give me a second, I'll set it back up, what was that, 28, yep, minus 4, and now we have 6x is equal to 2p minus 32. And now we just get rid of the 6 by dividing it on both sides. And what we end up with here is x equal to 2p over 6 minus 32 divided by 6. And we can reduce these into x being equal to 1 for 3p minus, why am I pausing here? I'm sorry, try and cut this part out. <laughs> uh, minus 5 and 2 6 or 5 and 1 third well, actually I'm running out of room a little bit here so I'm just gonna erase that let me get 5 and 1 third so and it's okay to leave the equation like this, where x is equaling, you know, not just a single value, but kind of a combination of a value with a variable and then a value without one. And that is how to solve uh, more complicated linear equations, ones that include the variable on both sides and ones that include the um, other variables 
in them. So, I will leave it up to the next video to show us the final parts of solving linear equations.